Okay, the ship is rolling over. Or it looks like it's going to completely roll over. Okay, we're gonna get to this side, and we're gonna see if we can just survive. So here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, we are back in Stormworks, and today, we are taking a look at the RMS Olympic that's been built for the game. It's been built by Ice Monster, we know him from building the SS Gillettes and also some really big cruise ships. So yeah guys, let's get into the video. Now we are joined by JL Killen, however, we tried to do this yesterday, but we basically ran into some multiplayer issues, and I think it's because of the brand new update, but uh, yeah, he started freezing and whatnot, but he's on the call right now, and we are going to walk through the ship, we are going to take a bit of a tour of the ship, and we're going to see some of the things that Olympic had that Titanic did not. And some of the things that Olympic didn't have compared to the Titanic. So this is going to be pretty cool. But I've been really anticipating this build for a really long time now. So uh, it's really awesome to actually see it. Now, I myself have not even toured the ship yet. So uh, this is going to be really, really awesome. So let's get started. All right. So with any good tour, we're going to start with the bridge. This is the command center for the ship. And as you can see, it's really well done. We've got our controls here, we've got the helm, and we've also got a wheelhouse. However, this is different compared to Titanic's. So, Jay Killen, do you want to explain why that is? Yeah, so the wheelhouse here on the Olympic is actually rounded because in 1911, when the Olympic was first built, it was built with a round wheelhouse. And it wasn't until the post-Titanic refit that it was changed to the more standard box-shaped wheelhouse like the Titanic. Now that's really interesting. Now my big question is, is why was it rounded to start with? So if you guys got any answers, uh, leave them down below. I'd like to hear them. So yeah, let's go ahead and let's actually go back into the wheelhouse and let's check it out. So in the wheelhouse, we've got a couple options. We've got light boilers, we got lights, and we also have the reciprocating engines, one and two. And we've got the scuttle, we'll check that out in a minute. And the central turbine engine starter. So um, why not get this thing moving? So. Let's see, I think, uh, how do we get this thing started up? So looking at the guide, it says to initiate the turbine engine and the two reciprocating engines right there. Okay, let's uh, check this out. There we go. And uh, I believe we have to light the boilers? Uh, no, it is just for cosmetic from what I've seen. Oh, interesting. Well, why not? There we go. So uh, let's go down below and let's see if it's working. And while we're going down, let's take a look at the grand staircase. Now, for some of you, you'll notice this looks a little bit familiar, and the reason that that is, is because Ice Monster submitted this Grand Staircase and won the Grand Staircase Challenge with this build, so yeah, this is super cool. Okay, so this is interesting. There is a reciprocating engine room back there. I did no clip through the ship to kind of look at some of the areas I wanted to check out, and the engine room was one of those spaces, but it's just blocked off. I'm not sure. Um, is there something we can get to from uh, up here? Let's take a look. So looking at the description on the Steam page, it says that the engine room has been dedicated to a physics flutter instead. Interesting. So I guess that's just to save on performance, obviously. So that's fine, but at least it's in there. That's pretty cool. Maybe I can, like, cheat my way in. Let's take a look. Alright, so using no clip, I've gotten into the engine room, and I should mention that what we're seeing is probably not supposed to be, well, I know it's not supposed to be accessible to the average user, but it's still very cool that it's here. Look at this. Wow, this is amazing. Holy cow. Alright, so let's go ahead, let's turn on the lights, and yep, we got a bit of a frame drop there, but it is to be expected with a ship of this size with this many lights and this much interior. So, yeah, that is once again to be expected. Let's go ahead, let's throttle up the central turbine engine and both reciprocating engines, so here we go. It's amazing to be on board the Olympic once again in Stormworks. The last time I actually sailed on the Olympic in Stormworks was back with Zequin's Olympic. So uh, it's nice to see the ship back in the game, and uh, yeah. Now, I'm definitely not going to be syncing the ship with the lights on because that's going to be a bit laggy with all these lights running. It does drop the frames a little bit, but uh, yeah, if you just want to sail the ship and just kind of ignore the lag, that's something you can do as well. That is also something that could be a bit enjoyable, but for now, we're going to set it today, and then we're going to do a proper tour of the interior of the ship. 
Alright, so the lights are now off, and you can see the lag has been reduced. So let's go ahead, let's enter in the ship, and let's take a look at some of these amazing interiors. So, we're gonna skip the upper level of the Grand Staircase, we already saw that in the Grand Staircase Challenge video, and we're gonna go this way to the Reading and Writing Room. Don't worry, we will get to the lounge in a moment. Entering in, this room looks stunning. It is really well done, and as you can see, this is just wonderful. You got the lights coming in, or just the exterior light coming in, and uh, we got this little alcove area. Now, something interesting about this area is that it was planned to be removed on the Titanic and was removed on the Britannic. Now, Jake Kellen, do you want to tell us why that is? Yeah, so on Titanic's maiden voyage, Thomas Andrews actually noted down that not many people actually use that alcove area, the area behind that arch there, that small little extrusion. And it was planned to be removed and for additional cabins to be there. And I know that on Britannic, this was actually removed and more cabins were placed in this area, like what was planned. So yeah, that's really interesting. If Titanic would have survived, we may have seen something like Britannic. And unfortunately with Britannic, it went down. And I don't know if any photos of that area even exist on Britannic, but uh, yeah, the plans kind of show the cabins extending from where you see those grand staircase windows there all the way back. You can see that on my Patroness of the Mediterranean Britannic tour, which will be in the top right corner. However, um, that lagged a lot on my old computer, so I can't promise it's going to be up to uh, the standards of my newer video. So yeah, but you can check that out as well. So let's go ahead and let's move on. Now going aft, well, entering more of the center portion of the ship, we find one of the most grand rooms on board the vessel, other than the grand staircase for some. And I love the little mirrors there. That is really cool. So, um, yeah, this is just really nice to see. Now, does your model have this, your Titanic model? I'm not sure. Uh, well, the main difficulty is since the lounge here is kind of in an area where the ship assembles itself, because the ship actually has to spawn in three pieces, and the middle piece is actually the lounge itself, but it kind of cuts into the bow section mm -hmm. a little bit, so it would kind of cut around there, so it wouldn't really be able to be sealable. It wouldn't okay, really be able to be yeah. sealable. So that makes sense. So that if the ship was going down, the room would start flooding from the back end and it would just kind of go yeah. crazy. Okay. So yeah, that makes sense. But it's still really amazing to see ice monsters build here. This is like the first time I've really seen this room put together in a game like this. And this is just awesome. I'm really blown away by the work that's been done here. So we're going to continue on. This has got to be one of the best, well, really the best RMS Olympic on the workshop today. So let's continue aft. Now going through this hallway here, we're kind of familiar with this. This is the aft grand staircase, but there is something different here and you may have already noticed it, but I'll hand it off to Jay Killen. Tell us what's different. Yeah, so on Olympics aft staircase, the iconic cabins A36 and A37, which would be known as Thomas Andrews and Francis Brown's cabin on Titanic's maiden voyage, uh, they weren't implemented on Olympic yet. So entering the smoking room, I'm not actually sure if I've ever seen this space built before. Wait a minute, did your old model have this? Uh, no it actually didn't, so it is actually interesting to see this built in Stormworks though. It really is because this is like a first look so for me I'm genuinely seeing this for the first time which is amazing and I'm gonna assume that there's more spaces like this that have never been built before in an Olympic class build on Stormworks that are in this ship so I'm excited to see what's next so we're gonna move past that and we're gonna take a look at uh, the Palm Court? Am I correct about that? Uh, I believe so. It is referred to as the Veranda Cafe or the Palm Court. And there's actually two. I can't remember which one's named which. But this one here uh, that connects to the smoking room, it allowed smoking because it's next to the smoking room. But the other one on the other side didn't permit smoking. It was more like an area where I think kids could also kind of hang around at. Oh, wow. I didn't actually know that. That's really cool. So this is where one of those deleted scenes from the movie came from where Molly Brown asks, how about another bit of ice or something? And the iceberg goes by, but obviously not on the Olympic, on the Titanic. Now this is something that I actually really like about the Olympic, this promenade. Instead of being enclosed in one end, it's open all the way. Now I can see the problems with it, especially in stormy weather. You couldn't really walk 
all the way through without getting a little bit drenched by rain if the wind was blowing in. So I can see where the benefit of closing part of it off would be. And uh, for me, I just like it how the sun just beams in through the entire promenade. But moving forward, we're going to take a look at some of the crew spaces. That would be the well deck and the forecastle deck. So I think this is pretty well done. But I know that there's actually some differences between models. Some actually show the uh, cargo hatches as black on the bottom instead of dado. And do you want to explain why that is, J. Killam? Yeah, so it's all according to the specification guides. For example, on Britannic specification guide, it shows the cargo hatch combings be painted a black color. And similar in Olympic's late career, they were actually painted in a black color, but I'm not sure if they were ever painted in a dado color. So it's just kind of inferred that black was painted on the hatch cover combings on the Titanic as well. That's really interesting, but for me, it doesn't really take anything away from the model. I think that this model is fantastic because, I mean, this is a lot of work that's been put into this. You can really tell. We just went through one deck, right? And we're seeing amazing detail. We're seeing rooms we've never seen before. And it's just an awesome experience. And there's so much more to take a look at. And I'm going to try to get through it in a timely manner because... I mean, there is a lot. So if you want to check it out as well, and if you've got the PC power for it, definitely download this. A link will be in the description. Let's keep going. Now, I want to see if there's any interior this way. And yes, there is. You can't go wrong with a little more interior, especially if it's not going to lag or anything. So going through here, this is a very interesting room. And I'm actually just going to hand it over to Jake Killen for this because I think you would know how to describe this better than I would. Yeah, so this room here is actually... The room underneath the forecastle deck that houses all the machinery for like the capstans and the anchor windlasses and all that advanced machinery involved with like mooring and anchoring and all that stuff. And yeah, you'll notice that there's actually small steam engines in here and that would actually power the winches, right? Yeah, it actually allowed power to the anchor windlass, I believe it was, as well as the, the capstans there because the capstans were actually able to be freely rotated around if you didn't know that. All right, so one of these doors will let me into the grand staircase, and I guess I picked the right one because here we are. So let's go down to F deck and let's take a look at this. Now you'll notice, where's the door to the Turkish bath? Well, it is not in the same place as on Titanic or Britannic. And uh, is it here? Unfortunately, it is not. But let's take a look. Here we have the swimming pool. So it is, well, pretty much the same. Is there any differences? I can't remember. Uh, it looks pretty similar from what I could tell. So yeah, I guess they were both pretty much identical, but uh, let's continue around. Oh, what's this over here? Oh, that's the Turkish bath entrance. Well, folks, um, I really do not know my way around Olympic, apparently. So um, I thought the entrance, well, I think there is an entrance over by the, um, the watertight door here. I'm not quite sure. But, uh, yeah. So, I completely forgot about that door there. So, uh, there we go. But here we have the Turkish baths. And as you can see, look at that. We've got portholes. Now, on Titanic, the Turkish bath also has portholes. But they're faux portholes. They're not real. And, uh, yeah. That's just something that's really interesting. So, uh, there we go. The Turkish baths on the Olympic. So, going up to D-Deck and primarily the reception room and dining room, we can see that this is really well done here. We've got lots of furniture, we've got the uh, wonderful couches, and we have the many arches that are here on the Olympic. Now, Jay Killen, it is speculated that the arches were changed on Titanic. Now, why was that? Um, I would assume that the hypothesis is that it would allow the room to feel much more open. And basically the difference on Titanic is that instead of it being multiple arched windows, it's just three larger windows. So yeah, I guess it just made the room feel like, instead of two rooms, obviously one big room, which is really interesting. But let's go over here and let's take a look at something I've been wanting to take a look at for, well, a little while. And here it is. It's a staircase going down to Scotland Road from the actual reception room, which is very cool. Now, I do believe that this was changed on a further revision of the ship, which is interesting. So, yeah, I guess they went with the Titanic-style one instead. Going this way, we should have some stairs, and we do. Let's see where this leads going down. We should have the squash court. Let's take a look. And yes, we do. Look at this. This is awesome. Going forward of that staircase we were just in a minute ago, we should be around the mailroom somewhere. Wait, where are we? 
Oh! We must be in a third class hallway somewhere. Alright, so here we are. Here we have the mail room on board the RMS Olympic. Very cool. Alright, so I'm jumping around a little bit, but here we are in the purser's office on C deck at the bottom of the grand staircase. Well, at the landing of the grand staircase. Now you'll notice something. There is a room over there. Let's take a look at what it is. So let's go over there, and we'll close the door behind me. And here we have the cloakroom. So, Jay Killen, what is a cloakroom? Yeah, so a cloakroom is actually just a room where you can store your coats and belongings temporarily. So yeah, that's what it is. So let's go ahead and make our way aft and whoa. Wow. This is really nice. So these are the large suites on board the ship. And you can see that they're actually connected via doors here. So very, very cool. So once again, this is on sea deck. And on Titanic, this clock, well, on the other side, is still in place, which is amazing. All right, so going up to B deck, we'll notice there's an open space there, but that's normal. We've seen Titanic a million times, so we know that there's a space there. It's a bit of a boarding entrance, but if we go through here, you'll notice it's a promenade. So, Jay Killen, why don't we see this on Titanic? Yeah, so on Olympic, the B deck promenade here actually wasn't used that often, and it was noted down, so during Titanic's construction, they actually decided to change this and basically remove it all out and replace it with a lot more additional cabins along the ship. And something else was also added here on Titanic that would eventually be added to Olympic, and what was that? Uh, right here where you're at right now, that would be around where the Cafe Parisienne was added on the Titanic. And like you said, it was also added on the Olympic later down the line. So you can really see that there was a lot of changes made. And uh, we're going to talk about something that's been highly controversial. And uh, Jay Killen, why don't you introduce it to everybody? Yeah, so the main thing that some people may be questioning or that things that people have heard is anything regarding the switch theory between the Titanic and the Olympic. But I'm here to clarify and explain that there's a lot of evidence that really goes against this whole theory. So switching the ships would involve much more than just simply switching the nameplates, and there are numerous aspects that disprove the theory. Both the Armist Olympic and the Armist Titanic had countless differences that would have to all be switched and reverted all in a very short time span. Noticeable differences would include Olympic's open A-deck promenade and the B-deck enclosed promenade. On the RMS Titanic, the forward portion of her A-deck promenade was enclosed with a wall and 42 brass-framed vertical sliding windows. The B-deck promenade that was found on Olympic would be replaced with the additional cabins on Titanic, like what was said previously, since it wasn't as popular. More alterations made on Titanic's B-deck in comparison with the Olympic was the extension of the popular a la carte restaurant and the extending of the restaurant galley and pantry to the port side and the new addition of the Café Parisienne located on the starboard side. The main aspect that debunks this theory is the time frames. The time that the switch supposedly took place was when Olympic arrived in Belfast for repairs in October of 1911. So keep in mind that the Titanic still had around five months left of construction as she was fully completed on March 31st in 1912. The time frame that both the Olympic and Titanic were together was only 44 days. For them to switch the ships, they would need to gut the interiors of both ships since every furnishing and interior piece was labeled with a yard identification number 400 for Olympic and 401 for Titanic. They would have to reverse and add numerous things that made the ships different after gutting both ships, and to then fully complete the Titanic with Olympic's identity within 44 days, despite it taking another five months of construction of Titanic to finish, like I said previously. A different aspect that debunks the theory is the insurance documents. Forms of this theory also states that the switch was done and that the Titanic was sunk intentionally for the insurance money, despite Titanic actually being underinsured for two thirds of her total cost, which was $5 million out of $7.5 million at the time. The total damage done to the Olympic from the HMS Hawk collision would have been a maximum cost of $125,000, which is much less of a cost of $2.5 million lost. Another impossibility is White Star Line keeping thousands and thousands of workers quiet in regards to the switch if it happened. The Titanic and Olympic switch and the insurance fraud theory is practically impossible to have happened. The truth is that the Titanic was the one that sunk on her maiden voyage due to many unfortunate weather conditions and circumstances, and the Olympic was the one to live her career known as the Old Reliable and for being a passenger liner as well as a troop ship for World War I. 
be eventually being scrapped in 1935 with many of her interior fittings being sold and auctioned off that contain the yard identification number of 400 which proves her identity as Olympic. Well, while you were saying that, um, it seems as if a lifeboat has um, wedged itself sort of on the deck. There's no way I'm moving this. Um, there is one way I can actually move it, and that is by pressing the scuttle. Now, um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, but uh, we will find out in a moment. But just before we do, I passed through an area that we didn't actually get to review, but we'll review real quick before we sink the ship. So, we've got some officer cabins here, we've got uh, the captain's uh, sitting room, and then we have... Do we have the wireless room? I'm actually not sure what this room is. The wireless room is actually located in a different area on the, the officer's quarters. Really? Where's that? Yeah. I believe it should be on the port side, maybe? I'm not sure. Alright, so there's another officer's cabin there. Actually, it might be on the oh, starboard side. Oh, there it side. is! Found it! Oh, never mind. There we are. What a nice view, by the way. That is very good. Alright, so, very cool. So, that is the RMS Olympic in Stormworks. And I cannot get this door open. But don't worry, there are plenty of other entrances for water to get into. So let's go ahead and uh, let's scuttle the ship. But for now, we're going to say goodbye to Jay Killen because uh, we're going to do this solo, and we're going to see if we can survive the sinking of the Olympics. So, uh, bye, Jay Killen. Goodbye. Now that Jay Killen has disappeared into the shadows, I'm pretty sure he's still watching over the ship right now as we continue sailing, but uh, we're going to go ahead and we are going to scuttle the ship. Now, I'm tempted to activate it while it's moving, and then we'll stop the ship after enough time has passed, and then we'll watch it go down, but... I have never seen the sinking, and I don't think Jay Kellen has either, so this is going to be a genuine surprise to see what happens, so let's go. Alright, so in three, two, one, and the skull has been pressed, so I have no idea what's going to happen. So I'm going to go into the helm, and I'm just going to see what happens. So here we go, we have the Olympic, as you can see it's sailing nicely. Oh boy, yep, I found the water, it is right there, it is rushing in, okay. We're going to seal the watertight doors. There we go. And we are going to stop the ship. Here we go. And stop. And stop. And let's go ahead and stop the central turbine. And there we go. Okay. The ship has been stopped. Now, surprisingly, she is just stable. So maybe she's taking water from both sides. Actually, no. It's only from the port side. And there seems to be no list, so we're just kind of tilting forward right now. So let's start getting the boats off, I guess. Let's go ahead and let's just uh, lower the boat. So there we go. Lower away. And I'm going to actually hop into the boat. So here we go, going down the side of the hull. This never gets old, but it's a little bit weird seeing that open promenade. Usually with the Olympic-class ships, we're sinking the Titanic. But here we have the Olympic. So here we go. And once we're down in the water, we can actually just cut the ropes. So we should be able to cut them in a minute. There we go. Perfect. Wonderful job. And it actually floats. Very nice. Oh, hold on. Um, I was unaware that the ship is still moving. Did I leave something on? Maybe I did. Let's go check that out. Let's see. That's off. That's off. That is also off. Okay, let's go ahead and shut down the reciprocating engines, and central turbine, and uh-oh, I'm starting to see a list appearing, this might not be good, okay, so it's not that bad, I thought it was gonna roll over, but it's not, it's just listing over a little bit to port, and it's going down by the bow, but it looks like we have stopped the ship completely, it's not moving anymore, let's go ahead and let's launch this boat, so here we go, and let's lower away, there we go, now we can also reel in the davits and launch this boat, but I think two boats will be fine for us, I mean, if one boat goes down with the ship, another one should be able to stay afloat. So let's go into the interiors and see if we can find any flooding. So F deck, looking pretty good. Not seeing any issues. Oh, that might be an issue. There's water spraying down from between the ceiling and the wall. So um, that could be concerning, and that is also concerning. So we want to find out what's going on there. Oh, there's the water. Okay, luckily I did seal the watertight doors, 
So, we do have a chance of staying afloat for longer. I mean, that's interesting. So, since it's using dynamic water flooding throughout the ship, if I open the watertight doors, technically the ship should go down a little more level. Right now, we're not going to do that. We might do that in a future video, but, uh, yeah, look at that. There's a little bit of water in here. Let's get out of here. Let's see if we can take a look at the predicament now. We were only in the boiler room for a very short amount of time. I'll just go out this way. I don't really care if I leave doors open. This ship is so big anyways. It doesn't really matter at this point. I think... Yep! The forecastle and the well deck are already gone. This thing is going under super fast. So, um, it is really a battle against time to try to, uh, get boats off or try to survive. And, whoa, hold on. Okay, the ship is rolling over. Or it looks like it's going to completely roll over. Okay, we're gonna get to this side. And we're gonna see if we can just survive. So here we go. I think not opening those watertight doors may have created instability in the hull. And uh, she's sort of capsizing. But luckily it's really slow. It's almost like the Costa Concordia. And it's not like violently tilting over like the fictional Poseidon. So that's at least something good. Let's uh, run aft. Oh, why don't we just stop at the Grand Staircase? Because why not? Oh, that is very bad. Okay. Yeah, the Grand Staircase is flooding very rapidly. Look at that. Okay, we might want to get out of here. That's not what I wanted to do. Quick, jump over the banister. There we go. Okay, now we really have to get out of here because this is the end. Like, the ship is going down. All right. Goodbye, Gymnasium. We actually didn't get a chance to look at you, but look at how amazing the Gymnasium is. It's got all this equipment in it, and uh, we're going to get out of here as fast as possible. Yeah, this is the end. Look at this. The ship is going down so fast at this point. There's no funnels collapsing, which is okay, but the uh, the ship is rapidly going under. And uh, here we go. We might actually see the ship go under in one piece, but we're going to try to run towards the stern and see if we can possibly survive. And I'm not going to no clip. I'm not going to cheat for this one. I'm just going to keep running until I can't run anymore. So here we go. Oh my gosh, it has dropped fast. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to have time. I'm just going to have to find a place to hold on. Yep, this is gonna have to do. Here we go. You can see that there's only one funnel remaining out of the water, and that is quickly going under. Look at the interiors. They're rapidly flooding. This is the end for the RMS Olympic, which is sort of weird to say. And uh, here we go. The water is approaching. We're just gonna try to hop off and swim away, because that is our best bet right now. Wow, the stern is just towering over us. And I didn't even get to check out the... Uh, the stern areas in the third class spaces. So uh, yeah, there's so much interior that it's hard to get it all in a timely manner. But uh, here we go, let's swim away. Quick, get away, please swim away, there we go. Oh my gosh. There goes the ship, just nosing down. And look at the props all out of the water. There goes the fantail slipping under, and it went really fast. Holy cow. And there's a little bit of a splash, and the ship is gone. And look at that, Olympic. That is so weird to see, just the Olympic nameplate sinking under. So there we go. So with that being said, if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you soon, guys. Goodbye.